And we're back with this week's Tech Tuesday report. As the White House looks to establish a presence on the moon, one pressing question is where would the power come from? NASA appears to have found an atomic answer. Here's Andrew Dimbert. The space race is back, and this time it's nuclear. Get off the nuclear warhead. But not like that. Acting NASA Administrator Sean Duffy is set to announce the agency is fast-tracking plans to build a nuclear reactor on the moon. Documents obtained by Politico reveal NASA will solicit proposals for a 100-kilowatt nuclear reactor that would launch to the lunar surface by 2030. And we're going back to the moon in order to learn to live, to work, to survive. NASA has made returning to the moon and establishing a lasting human presence there a top priority. Power is key to building bases, supporting crews, and staying long term. And with 14 days of darkness on the moon each month, solar power won't cut it. So the race is on to be the first to bring power to the moon. The directive warning, if other countries manage to build a reactor first, they could declare a keep-out zone, which would significantly inhibit the United States. China and Russia currently have a joint plan to bring a reactor to the moon by 2035. A senior NASA official saying it is about winning the second space race. The UK is already working on its own lunar reactor, partnering with Rolls-Royce to build a miniaturized system that could support humans on the moon. It's a very small reactor that we can absolutely launch into space, so it's about the size of a car, and it allows us to give continuous energy and electricity. When you've got the sun, you can use solar. But if you want to explore the dark side of the moon uh, and go around the other side, actually you're going to need something else. So the, the nuclear power allows you to do that. 